you know, Michael Jackson Thriller, first single off that record was with Paul McCartney. And what happened was it just didn't sell. It sold okay, but not like everybody thought. The change that was March of 83, and a thing called the Moonwalk, and a thing called Motown 20th Anniversary Show. And from there, it was full on, 150 miles an hour for two years. Two years solid. I called on Tower Records. music world and vinyl is what gives us an advantage and edge. Um, you know, we need that because it makes us even more special. <laughs> you know, so for me, you know, starting out when I was 15, my music has been released on vinyl since then. Um, so as an indie, you know, artist and on indie labels, vinyl is very important for us because it, it's, it's that unique, special thing. You know, it's um, sets us apart, so very important. and. Uh, yeah, my next album is going to be coming out on vinyl, and I'm really psyched about that. So. It's always been, uh, the Latin industry, the music industry, has always been a bit of a, a concentrated version of what you would call, or you don't call it as much anymore, the general market, because that's all blurring these days. Um, but, you know, when we factor in sort of like the economic situations of many of the countries where a lot of these artists come from, um, and the fact that the uh, Latin divisions of many of the major labels here um, never had the same kind of budgets that the uh, general market did. A lot of stuff, even when vinyl was involved back in the 60s and 70s, a lot of that stuff didn't get made on vinyl unless it was the only um, uh, format available. So, you know, even if you could like listen to something on the radio and you couldn't even buy it a lot of times. So now with the, with the rise of vinyl, even still, a lot of the major labels have ignored some of the biggest titles that you can get on CD. We can't get on vinyl. If you can believe it, the majority of Shakira's early catalog is not available on vinyl. So there's an absolute opportunity, hopefully, that will start developing. And I'm starting to see that now to, you know, entrepreneurs, companies that are identifying that and like, let's make this. Well, in order to get a bigger mass, uh, a lot of the artists will make multiple versions of the same album and hit the same day. If you go to Target, there may be a red version, red vinyl version, right? If you go to Walmart, there may be a blue version, right? There could be, you know, endless mixes and matches, and it's a way for the artists and the major labels to get their music into those big box retailers uh, by offering an exclusive, you know, Barnes and Noble. They all ask for, it. you know, typically I'll go like, okay, it's getting crazy. We're not gonna have like 10 different versions and manage all that manufacturing and different, you know, things. Um, but, you know, it's exciting for the fans um, because they have become collectors. They have been what it was like Actually, I can speak to this in the 70s where, you know, you wanted to keep it. You wanted to read the liner notes. You wanted to have that colored version. You wanted to have something that was unique or number. Vinyl plays a pivotal role in that um, because it's a branding piece. And uh, if you know vinyl in the old days, it's one of the most iconic covers ever called Whipped Cream and Other Delights. Uh, Amazon on vinyl alone sells about 150, 200 copies a week. I definitely budget 
So a bigger art, you know, an artist that's streaming or selling a lot more is going to have that budget to be able to make that that vinyl, the production times for vinyl, and then maybe nine months later they'll finally get around to putting the vinyl. For the emerging acts, the smaller acts with the less of a budget, it um, it takes a lot of long-term planning. Labels gonna look at like, are you going on tour? Put the budget together to like make maybe a run of like 500 to 1,000 perhaps. So it really just depends. It depends. Most people are doing vinyl these days, but still because of the production times it, and, and cost, it's not cheap. Especially in business management, or the labels looking at budgets. It's a real tough thing to manage because you may be dealing with, uh, you know, 500 pieces only or a thousand, uh, but you do not want to, uh, and that gets back to the use of the emails and seeing what kind of pre-orders you can gather because you don't want to be wrong. You don't want obsolescence. These things are costing 10, 12, 13 dollars a piece sometimes more expensive and you don't want to sit, throw in, throw away, it's a lot of money.